Hello, I'm Donna Rankin, the GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract Contracting Officer from the Office of Professional Services and Human Capital Categories of the General Services Administration. My training today will cover the GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract Basics. Overview of the GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract. More than 560 federal government agencies and organizations obtain charge card products and services through GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract. Federal government agencies and organizations issue task orders against the GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract for charge card products and services from one of two contractor banks, U.S. Bank and Citibank. Agencies and organizations pay no direct fees for using the GSA Smart Pay program. Business lines. There are four business lines under the GSA Smart Pay 3 master contract, and these include purchase, used to procure, order, and pay for supplies and services, travel, used for official travel and travel-related expenses, fleet, used for fuel, maintenance and repair of government-owned and operated vehicles. Integrated combines two or more business lines on a single account. Program benefits. There are a number of benefits to using the GSA Smart Pay program as a payment solution, including safety and transparency. The GSA Smart Pay program provides secure solutions for efficient, payment transactions. Customers also have access to tools that promote increased transparency through access to spend and performance data. Safety features include EMV, which stands for EuroPay, MasterCard, and Visa to make cards secure. Electronic access to data. Through GSA SmartPay contractor bank online systems, account managers and cardholders have immediate access to complete transaction level data, helping to mitigate fraud, waste, and abuse. The electronic access system provides account access, account management, and a variety of reports for agency program coordinators to assist in the effective management of the program. Refunds. Agencies and organizations have the opportunity to earn refunds based on a single rate that considers both volume of spend and speed of pay. Minimums may vary by contract line item and business line. An agency and the GSA Smart Pay Contractor Bank can negotiate additional refund incentives and document it in the task order. Agencies can maximize refunds earned by migrating spend from convenience checks, personal payment, such as cash or personal credit card, and traditional contract payment to GSA SmartPay payment solutions. In fiscal year 2021, agencies and organizations received over $390 million in refunds. Worldwide acceptance. Through the use of commercial payment infrastructure, customers are able to use GSA SmartPay solutions anywhere in the world where merchants accept cards. Favorable pricing. GSA SmartPay solutions provide automatic point of sale recognition for many GSA discount programs, including federal strategic sourcing initiative programs, the GSA city pair program, and more. A GSA SmartPay travel payment solution is required to obtain airfare discounts through the GSA city pair program creating billions in annual savings government-wide. Integrated with GSA Advantage, GSA schedule contracts include a contract term that the card can be used as an ordering and payment mechanism under the micro-purchase threshold, and for many contracts over the micro-purchase threshold, subject to the cardholder's purchase authority. Master Contract Life Cycle. The GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract is an indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity 
contract with a 13 year transactional period of performance. The contract has a four year base period and three three year option periods. The master contract was awarded in August 2017. The transactional period of performance was from August 2017 through November 2018. The transactional period allowed time for agencies and organizations to evaluate contractor proposal submissions, select the Smart Pay 3 bank, integrate systems, card delivery, and account activation. The transactional period is considered the go live date to begin performance of the contract. The four year base period for the Smart Pay 3 contract is from November 30, 2018 through November 29, 2022. The three three year option periods are identified on the bottom of the slide. The first option period is fast approaching for the period of performance, November 30th, 2022 through November 29, 2025. Task order types. Agencies and organizations award task orders under the GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract to obtain products and services. The four task order types under the GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract are standard, tailored, tag along, and pool. The standard task order contains the same requirements as the master contract. Agencies solicit both contractor banks for desired tier one core and tier two value added products and services as described in the contractor's presentation package. Developing and awarding a standard task order consists of three major tasks. Developing the task order request, in, which includes a statement of work and instructions for submission of a price proposal. Technical proposals are not utilized. Evaluating the contractor's task order proposals and developing the task order award document. The tailored task order includes agency customer specific requirements which as a rule of thumb would increase the level of effort required from the contractor beyond what is required under the master contracts, but still within scope. For example, reporting is included within the scope of the master contract, but if a specific report your agency may need is not included in the standard offering, the agency may choose to develop a tailored task order. Agencies solicit both contracted banks for desired tier one core and tier two value added products and services tailored to meet agency specific requirements. Developing and awarding a task order consists of the same three major tasks listed for the standard task order, which includes comprehensive statement of work and instructions for submission of technical and price proposals. Evaluating the contractor's task order proposal based on the established criteria and developing the task order award document. The tag along order task order uses another agency's established contract so that it may take advantage of that task order's pre-negotiated terms, rates, and conditions. As a result, all administrative responsibilities of the task order are placed on one agency. The pool task order can occurs when two or more agencies collaborate to develop and issue one task order, which will meet the needs of multiple agencies. Currently, the GSA Smart Pay Program Office manages the pool task order for smaller agencies, tribes, and tribal organizations. Pricing structure. There are two types of products and service offerings under the GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract. Tier one required or core requirements and tier two value added or optional requirements. The tiers and the products and services under each are found in the master contract section C.3.1 product and service offerings. Tier one and tier two differ and that tier one contains both not separately priced and separately priced items and are the same for both contractors, while Tier 2 contains only separately priced contract line items 
and may vary by contractor. Payment solutions. Tier one product and service offerings are the core requirements for this program and are the payment solutions used to initiate the majority of the transactions under the GSA Smart Pay program. Both contractor banks had to propose on the tier one offerings to receive a contract. The tier one product and service offerings listed in the master contract are offered at no additional cost and included in the minimum refund amounts for standard, large ticket and e-payables supplier initiated payments, contract line item numbers by business line, unless otherwise indicated. The only exceptions are the CLINs for non-interchange based government to government, G to G transactions and convenience checks. A few of the tier one product and service offerings included in the GSA Smart Pay 3 master contract are identified on the next two slides. They include accounts payable file review, ATM access, chip card, convenience check, declining balance cards, email short message service alert service, e-payable supplier initiated payments, foreign currency cards, ghost cards, and GSA Smart Pay Tax Advantage travel card account. Continuation of tier one product and service offerings include interchange based government to government transactions, mobile applications, mobile payments, net billing, non interchange based government to government transactions, single use accounts, tokenization and virtual cards. Tier two requirements. Contractors were not required to offer or provide tier two value added products and services to receive a master contract award. Since tier two products and services are value added or optional, they may or not, they may or may not be included in each bank's GSA Smart Pay 3 master contract and will vary from bank to bank. Banks have the option to offer bank or brand specific proprietary payment solutions and other services under the tier two categories contained in the master contract. Tier two technologies must be offered at the master contract level in order to make them available at the agency task order level. The master contract contains ceiling prices for the proposed value added products and services. This slide includes a few of the tier two value added products and services included in the GSA Smart Pay 3 master contract. They include additional authorization controls, additional data mining tools, after hours, roadside assistance, combined charge card and identification card technology, commercially offered convenience services, emerging technology, e-payable buyer initiated payment, e-payable straight through processing, international fleet, and telematics. Payment liability. There are two types of accounts, centrally billed accounts, CBA, and individually billed accounts, IBA. A centrally billed account is an account established by the contractor at the request of the agency to pay for official government purchases for which the customer agency is directly billed and liable for making the payment. All purchase, all purchase and fleet accounts are centrally billed. Travel accounts used for airfare and other travel related transactions may also be centrally billed. Agencies will specify at the task order level which travel and integrated cards would be centrally billed accounts. An individually billed account is a contractor issued account used by authorized individuals to pay for official travel and travel related expenses for which the contractor bills the account holder and for which the individual is liable to pay. The government reimburses employees only for authorized and allowable expenses and employees are responsible for amounts charged in excess of the allowable reimbursement. 
refunds. What is a refund? A refund is a monetary payment made by the contractor bank to the agency based on the dollar amount or spend volume during a specified time period. Customer agencies can and have used refunds earned to directly fund and support efforts critical to agency mission delivery and support. In the GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract, refunds are expressed in terms of basis points or cents per transaction, depending on the contract line item. A basis point is 1 one hundredth of 1% expressed as 0.01% or 0.0001. Refunds under Smart Pay 3 are expressed as a single rate that takes into consideration both spend volume and spend of, and speed of pay. Refunds under Smart Pay 3 are expressed as a single rate that takes into consideration both spend volume and speed of pay. A refund may also include additional payments from the contractor to the agency to correct improper or erroneous refund payments or make a invoice adjustment. Refunds versus fees. The GSA Smart Pay 3 contract includes refund based pricing and fee based pricing. Refund based pricing in the GSA Smart Pay 3 master contract is for products and services that generate interchange. Interchange is a fee paid by the merchant's financial institutions to the card issuing bank for processing its customer merchant transaction. Typically expressed, and a percentage of the total transaction amount passed on to the merchant through the merchant financial institution's fees. If interchange is generated, the refund is part of that fee given back to the agency. It's also expressed in terms of basis points or cents per transaction and the minimum refund that must be paid to agencies for use of the products or services. GSA Smart Pay 3 contractors must provide the minimum refund rate or higher when the product and service is ordered by the agency at the task order level. GSA Smart Pay 3 contractors may not propose less than the refund rate for any contract line item as found in the master contract. Contractors may take into consideration historical data provided by the agency and the task order requests for proposal to offer higher refund rates at the task order level. Fee-based pricing in the GSA Smart Pay 3 contract for products and services that do not generate interchange, therefore no refunds are applied against the spend or those contract line items. Convenience checks is an example of a product that does not generate interchange. Fee is also expressed in terms of minimum refunds, maximum hourly rates, or maximum fixed fees, or net basis points for the specific product or service offered. GSA Smart Pay 3 contractors may provide discounts on these items at the task order level based on historical information of the specific agency. Discounts are not required, but may be offered by the contractor bank. GSA Smart Pay 3 contractors may not propose more than the fee for any contract line item as found in their master contract. Calculation of refunds. Refunds are calculated and aggregated for quarterly remittance in accordance with the GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract Section B.3.3 Calculation of Refunds. The steps to calculate refunds include first, you determine the net charge volume. The net charge volume is the sum of all purchases, including convenience checks, ATM, cash advances and other fee generating products and services, less merchant credits. Next, identify convenience check spend 
from net charge volume. Then determine the gross credit losses. Gross credit losses are the balances on individually billed accounts that reach the pre-described number of calendar days past the closing date on the statement of account in which the charges appeared for the reporting period without adjustments as stated at the task order level. Next, subtract convenience check spend and gross credit losses from net charge volume to determine refund eligible net charge volume. The refund eligible net charge volume is the sum of purchases with eligible transaction codes included to calculate refunds, ATM, cash advances, and other fee generating products and services, less merchant credits. For a list of transactions that are included in net charge volume for the purposes of this contract, see section J.1, attachment one, titled transaction codes and descriptions. Finally, calculate the gross refund and GSA contract access fee to determine the net refund amount. The gross refund amount is comprised of the GSA contract access fee and the refund amount paid to the agency. It's actually the refund amount before the deduction of the GSA contract access fee. The net refund amount is the payment from the contractor to the agency based on the dollar or spend volume during each reporting period. Additional task order requirements. If a participating agency develops additional requirements for products and services not offered under their current task order during the period of performance of the master contract, the agency will first consider the current GSA SmartPay 3 contractor for the requirement. If the agency's current contractor cannot fulfill the requirement, the agency will give consideration to the other GSA SmartPay 3 contractor before completing the requirement outside of the master contract. If the agency makes a written determination as required by agency procurement policy that additional requirements cannot be met by any GSA SmartPay 3 contractor or that the requirements are out of scope of the master contract, the agency may procure their requirements outside of the master contract. A question to test your knowledge of the GSA Smart Pay 3 master contract. True or false? My agency has very unique needs, therefore the terms and conditions of the GSA Smart Pay 3 master contract can be amended or deleted by a task order. Take a few seconds to think about the question and your response. The answer is false. In accordance with contract law, the GSA Smart Pay 3 master contract cannot be amended or deleted by a task order. However, customers may include requirements in task orders if requirements are within the scope of products and services. Restrictions. Master contract restrictions include task orders may not increase the scope, period, or maximum value of the master contract under which the task order is issued. Unique to the travel card program, a standard or tailored task order may not split agency requirements between individually and centrally billed accounts. If an agency places a task order, they may not issue one task order for individually billed accounts with one contractor and another task order for centrally billed accounts with a different contractor. Ordering agencies shall not alter GSA's contract access fee as part of the task order award process. Another question to test your knowledge of the GSA Smart Pay 3 master contract. Yes or no? GSA Smart Pay 3 contractor banks are encouraged to propose improvement to the services, features, or other requirements of the master contract. Take a few seconds to think about the question and your response.
The answer is yes. Section H.16 of the master contract encourages banks to propose improvements to the contract. Service improvements. After contract award, the government may solicit and the contractor is encouraged to propose independently improvements to the services, features, or other requirements of the master contract. In accordance with GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract Section H.16, Service Improvements. Improvements may be proposed to save money, to improve technology or performance, or for any other purpose which presents a service advantage to the government. Proposed service improvements that are acceptable to the government will be processed as modifications to the master contract. This occurred immediately after award of the GSA Smart Pay 3 master contract. Both banks proposed a service enhancement to be considered under their respective contracts. Pilot programs. Pilot programs are covered under Section C.3.1.3 of the master contract. Customized services proposed or requested as pilot programs shall include substantial modification or changes to core products and services within the scope of the master contract or, when applicable, the scope of the agency's task order. Pilot programs are requested in accordance with Section H.16, Service Improvements of the Master Contract. Services may run for a period of time shorter than the master contract or task order period of performance may have additional requirements for evaluation, feedback, and reporting to substantiate program viability and priced separately as negotiated between the GSA contracting officer and contractor. Pilot programs for GSA. Customized services at the master contract level may include but not be limited to pilot programs initiated by GSA with government-wide applicability, customized training materials for payment solution programs, pilot or demonstration of new processes, and contractor-suggested or government-suggested service improvements. Pilot programs for agencies and organizations. Customized services for agencies may include but not be limited to Customize agency-specific training materials, production and submittal of agency 1099 information to the Internal Revenue Service, pilot or demonstration of new processes, contractor-suggested or government-suggested service improvements, priced separately as negotiated between the agency and the contractor. Agencies may not modify or change the terms and conditions of the master contract. Program stakeholders. This slide provides a graphic illustration of the programmatic relationship between GSA Smart Pay stakeholders. The Center for Charge Card Management is in the middle of the chart. They provide overall program management and advocacy for the program. Agencies and organizations use card products and services to support their missions. Banks provide charge card products and services through GSA Smart Pay 3 master contracts and they issue the charge cards. Network brands provides the transaction network for GSA Smart Pay 3 charge cards. And finally, the Office of Management and Budget has oversight of the government-wide charge card program. GSA Smart Pay Bank Responsibilities. Contractor banks partner with brands to provide solutions under the master contract. A few of these services include commercial billing and payment systems, single refund rate, which considers both volume of spend and speed of pay, internal controls for mitigating fraud and abuse, electronic systems for statements, payment history, 
and account information, for example, the electronic access system, training and training support, which may include participating in the GSA Smart Pay Annual Training Forum and providing agency training. The training may be specific to the business line provided by the contractor bank. Reports and data analysis support. Assistance with audits and investigations. For audits, the contractor shall assist any authorized unit of the government or tribal organization by providing reasonable access to all GSA Smart Pay administrative, financial, and management data. For investigative assistance, the contractor shall assist any authorized unit concerning alleged wrongdoing or suspected fraud, waste, misuse, or abuse by agency employees or those entities doing business with the government or tribal organizations. Another question to test your knowledge of the Smart Pay 3 Master Contract. True or false? GSA Smart Pay cardholders have responsibilities for managing GSA Smart Pay solutions appropriately. Take a few seconds to think about the question and your response. The answer is true. In accordance with the master contract, cardholders are required to comply with rules and responsibilities outlined in the GSA Smart Pay cardholder training and agency specific training. Contracting Officer Leading Practices. To support GSA Smart Pay programs and agencies, contracting officers are encouraged to understand the establishment of task orders in accordance with the Federal Acquisition Regulation as set forth at 48 CFR 16.505, develop and award agency task orders, serve as the ordering official for agencies, and maintain lines of communication with agency organization program coordinators. Evaluation of contract performance. In accordance with section H.17, evaluation of contract performance of the master contract, the ordering contracting officer will ensure all required agency task order evaluations are documented in the form of a past performance evaluation and the contractor performance assessment reporting system, no less than annually. Evaluation ratings and definitions can be found in FAR 42.1503 H4, Table 42-1, Evaluation Rating Definitions. The contractor shall provide their comments and acknowledge their performance evaluation in CPARS within 60 calendar days of receipt that the evaluation is ready for review. The agency reviewing official is the final authority at the task order level on CPARS reports if the contractor disagrees on the assessment provided by the assessing official. Record retention. In accordance with section C.7.2.4, record retention and retrieval of the master contract, banks are required to maintain electronic records of all transactions for a period of six years after final contract payment. Final contract payment is defined as the final payment for the particular charge under each agency's task order. Online access should be provided to GSA and the agency for six years after the concurrence of each transaction. Review, approval, and reconciliation data are considered to be parts of the transaction and should be subject to the same six-year record retention requirement. Transition. There are four types of transitions under the GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract. The first one is startup and implementation transition. The Master Contract startup and, startup and implementation transition requirements are the processes required of the contractor upon Master Contract award. This transition includes, but is not limited to the GSA Smart Pay Master Contract Kickoff Forum, 
presentation packages and preparation to begin transaction processing. Transition from previous contract, implementation of services, technology transitions, and post-contract transition. The second transition is technological advance. During a transition from one technology solution to another with the same contractor, for example, in an updated electronic access system, the contractor shall ensure that the transition disruption shall be minimized. Updates on new technologies may subject agency program systems to reviews, audits, or certification and accreditation as specified in the security requirements section of the master contract. The contractor shall notify the designated agency point of contact of changes or updates to the program technology, including but not limited to changes in functionality, usability, format, appearance, or security. The third transition is agency and organization transition. The agency startup and implementation transition requirements are the processes required of the contractor upon task order award and include, but are not limited to, task order process, standard or tailored, task order competition and award, preparation to begin transaction processing, transition from previous contract and implementation of services. The final transition is post-contract transition. At the end of this master contract's period of performance, the contractor shall monitor and manage a cooperative, orderly, and seamless transition to a successor. The contractor should provide phase out services for up to 18 months prior to the expiration date of the contract. The contractor should provide sufficient experienced personnel during the phase in and phase out period to ensure that there is no decrease in the quality of services provided under the master contract and task orders. The general contact information is provided for the GSA Smart Pay 3 Program Support Center, manned by team members from the Center for Charge Card Management, as well as the customer service contact information for Citibank and U.S. Bank. This information may also be found on the GSA Smart Pay website. Additional GSA Smart Pay courses available during the virtual forum include the course that you're attending, which is the GSA Smart Pay 3 Master Contract Basics course, as well as the other courses provided by GSA Smart Pay team members listed on this slide. Although my contact information is on the slide, I would also like to make you aware of the remaining Smart Pay acquisition team members. The team members are Katrina Garrett, Nicole Ammon, and Rosalind Cherry. This concludes the briefing portion of this session. Thank you for your time and attention. We are going to now have a live question and answer session on the content of today's class. Thank you for attending this session and please stay on the line for the live Q&A.